Hey everyone, this is Dimitri Pergamonic with MarketChameleon.com. In this video, I wanted to show a couple different ways to read an implied volatility chart. I'm going to use SPY in this example, and I brought up the uh, implied volatility chart for SPY. This is a one-year chart, and this is looking at the 30-day implied volatility, 30-day constant maturity implied volatility. The interesting thing about implied volatility when you're looking at a chart, it's different than a stock because a stock like Apple or SPY can appreciate every year, you know, for 10 years, 20 years. It could just keep going up and up and up. But volatility, it's considered a mean reverting metric. In other words, it, it can not appreciate just continuously go up and up and up. It usually trades around some mean. And when we look at charts, we try to assess uh, how far away is it moving right now from the mean and let's take a look first at the implied volatility itself I'm going to take off the option volume here and we could see that you know the implied volatility it could move down and up and right now um, we see it's kind of where in the it, actually in the middle of where where it's been trading all year so another way to compare it is we could compare the implied volatility to its moving average see how far away it is from from its 20-day moving average so you could see here it kind of just right at the right at its moving average but in this chart here what we see is how far away it could move away from its 20-day moving average so you could see here the distances right how much can it diverge from its moving average uh, so we're seeing like these peaks here you know on and below also we could look at the realized volatility how does the implied volatility which is derived from the options you know how does it compare to the actual volatility of the stock so over here we see here how far apart they are um, today the implied volatility from the from the stocks recent volatility and how much they've actually diverged in in the past to see if you know the if it currently diverged um, very far away or is it closer uh, and over here it seems like um, you know it's it's there is a spread here but historically you know we've seen the spread even get a lot wider um, uh, from a historical basis now I'm going to take the other one is looking at the historical one-year volatility so this is a one-year moving average volatility so we could see here that the 30-day volatility how far it moves moves away and we see that it could really get down there away from that line right and then right now it kind of just converged and it's like right right at the uh one year historical volatility and that's one of the things that allows us to see where is the current implied volatility that's predicting you know the future in the next 30 days compared to the historicals and how far away it is from a historical mean just to give us a sense of has it you know gone very far away like is it is is that divergence uh very far from its from what it from what it usually does now another way to compare the implied volatility just not against itself but you could even do it against a different products so I'm gonna let go of this and let's just compare it to um, IWM for example so here what I'm looking at is SPY implied volatility and IWM which is you know the S&P 500 versus the uh, Russell the the Russell 5000 and here we see that uh, how far do they the implied volatilities diverge from from each other and how close do they get um, and you could see here like sometimes it looks to me like on the way down when implied volatility is coming in then you get a big spread between the two implied volatilities when implied volatility is going up right when it comes back up that spread closes up right and that's what it looks like and it kind of makes sense as maybe as the volatility is going up and as maybe the market's going down things kind of start moving all in sync uh, you know they go to one beta so this kind of makes sense um, from that standpoint and now you could see you know um, today's volatility what is the spread between uh, SPY and IWM 
And sometimes people use this also as a kind of like a pair trade or, you know, um, buying one straddle, right? Because you to get the implied volatility, you buy one straddle and to finance it, you might sell a straddle in a different product um, to see if those implied volatilities converge. And I'll give you an example. Let's say you're looking to buy straddle in something like Apple, right? And maybe you feel like Apple might has a very good chance to move in the near future. Uh, maybe you've analyzed there's a lot of uh, chatter going on. Maybe there's like an event coming up. You know, maybe maybe um, the 13F filings are coming up and, you know, you, you believe things have been accumulating in Apple and once they release the 13F filings, then you're going to have these people who follow the gurus uh, all, all jump in and you want to get ahead of that move. But just in case you think, well, if the volatility of the market sits here, then there's a good chance that the volatility will just come in everywhere. And one way to look at it is, well, maybe financing, you know, the Apple straddle by selling the SPY straddle uh, this way, you know, if the market moves, they're both going to move anyway, right? So if the market's moving, you're going to lose on that. But, you know, Apple's probably going to follow as well. But there's a chance that the market might sit there and Apple have a really violent move. So you would you would win on that spread. So there are different ways to look at it. That's just an example. Um, and uh, hopefully this video was helpful. See you guys in the next video. Bye.